Welcome to the European News on October 3rd, 2021. It's bank holiday in Germany, by the way. Today we have our day of reunification. But we start in Brussels in Belgium. The European Commission dispersed the Czech Republic on Wednesday 915 million euros as pre-financing under the Development and Resilience Facility and this corresponds to 13% of the total funding the country is expected to receive from the facility. With the pre-financing, the important investment and reform projects can be initiated, which the Czech Republic has outlined in its development and resilience plan. In total, the Czech Republic is to receive 7 billion euros under the facility. The Commission will approve further disbursements on the basis of how the investments and reforms foreseen in the Czech Recovery and Resilience Plan are implemented. The payout was preceded by the successful issue of the first bonds as part of Next Generation EU. By the end of the year, the Commission intends to raise a total of up to 80 billion euros with, with long-term bonds, which are to be supplemented by short-term bonds, so-called EU bills, in order to finance the first scheduled disbursements to the member states as part of next generation EU. The development and resilience facility at the heart of the next generation EU development plan will provide 800 billion euros to encourage investment and reform in all member states. The Czech plan is part of the EU's unprecedented crisis response, which aims to emerge stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic, support ecological and digital change, and strengthen the resilience and cohesion of our societies. The development and resilience facility is used to finance investments and reforms in the Czech Republic that are likely to bring about profound changes in the Czech economy and society. And of course, again, I have some examples for you. Securing ecological change is one. The Czech plan provides a budget of 1.4 billion euros to finance extensive renovation programs to increase the energy efficiency of residential and public buildings, including childcare and social facilities. It also aims to support the decarbonization of transport by investing 1.1 billion euros in rail infrastructure, more than 5,000 low emission vehicles for the public and corporate sectors, over 4,500 charging stations for electric vehicles and 90 kilometers of cycle paths. So, and they are supporting digital transformation. The plan is to invest 585 million euros in strengthening digital skills and, in this context, revising the curricula in the field of digital education, providing digital equipment and training for educational institutions, as well as new higher education programs with a digital focus and continuing education and training funding for retraining programs. The plan also includes an investment of 450 million euros in digital transformation and cybersecurity in public administration, also in the judiciary and healthcare. And there's strengthening economic and social resilience. A major focus of the Czech plan is on strengthening healthcare resilience. Investments of 823 million euros will be made in new medical facilities and equipment, including cancer prevention and treatment, rehabilitation and cardiovascular treatments. In addition, the plan envisages a form of long-term care, the accessibility and quality of which will be improved across the country through investment. The plan will also improve the business environment by improving assistance to finance, speeding up approval processes, and strengthening anti-corruption measures. And next, we go to Cardiff in the United Kingdom. The UK government should use this autumn's spending review to share responsibility and allocate long-term funding to make, uh, Wales Coast Tips safe. Finance and local government minister Rebecca Evans has said that. As our climate changes, Wales cold spoil tips need attention and long-term funding to prevent the risk of future landslips. Based on information from the Coal Authority, the Welsh Government has estimated that more than 40% of all the UK's coal tips are located in Wales, and around one in seven of these are classed as high risk. Finance and Local Government Minister Rebecca Evans will call on the Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak to share responsibility and allocate funding 
to deal with the pre-devolution legacy of coal mining in Wales. It is estimated at least 500 million to 600 million pounds will be needed over the next 10 to 15 years. And the minister said about this, Wales is disproportionately affected by the legacy of coal mining and climate impacts are increasing the risks disused coal tips pose to our communities. As a pre-devolution issue, we need the UK government to share responsibility and prevent another landslip from happening. As rainfall intensifies and temperatures rise, the risk to life and livelihoods is increasing unpredictably. The UK government has a legal and moral responsibility to work with the Welsh government to address this issue and fund these long-term costs. There is an opportunity for us to work together in the coming years to tackle the climate and nature crisis we face and this year's spending review is the chance to find that common ground and to leave a positive, fairer and lasting legacy for the former mining areas in Wales. The spending review will set the amount of funding available to the Welsh Government for the next three years to 2024-2025. The Finance Minister will also be asking the UK Government to use the opportunity to invest in Wales by addressing historic underfunding in rail infrastructure and research and development, review its decision to withhold £375 million of annual EU structural funding, which is currently used to support programs including employability, skills and apprenticeships, replace EU farm funding in full and fund ongoing operations at border ports following their exit from the EU. And now we go back to Brussels in Belgium. The European Commission also disbursed 818 million euros as pre-financing from the Development and Resilience Facility to Croatia. This corresponds to 13% of the total funds the country is to receive from the Development and Resilience Facility. With the pre-financing, the important investments and reform projects that Croatia has outlined in its Development and Resilience Plan can now be initiated. Croatia is expected to receive a total of 6.3 billion euros from the Development and Resilience Facility. The Commission will approve further disbursements depending on the implementation of the investments and reforms foreseen in the Croatian Development and Resilience Plan. So, the payout was preceded by the successful issue of the first bonds as part of Next Generation EU, as I said before in the video. And once again, by the end of the year, the Commission intends to raise a total of up to 80 billion euros with long-term bonds, which are to be supplemented by short-term bonds, so-called EU bills, in order to finance the first scheduled disbursements to the Member States as part of Next Generation EU. The Development and Resilience Facility at the heart of Next Generation EU will provide, and I have to repeat myself because it's important, up to 800 billion euros to promote investment and reform in the member states. The Croatian plan is part of the unprecedented crisis response to the EU, whose ambition is to emerge stronger from the COVID-19 pandemic, to support ecological and digital change, and to strengthen the resilience and cohesion of our societies. The Development and Resilience Facility finances investments and reforms in Croatia that are expected to bring about profound changes in the Croatian economy and society. And of course, also for Croatia, I do have some examples. And we start with securing ecological change. The Croatian plan envisages 728 million euros investments in promoting sustainable mobility in order to modernize railway lines, develop autonomous electric taxis with supporting infrastructure for people with disabilities, build 1300 uh, charging stations for electric vehicles and zero emission vehicles and introduce ships. And also their support for digital change. The plan provides 126 million euros for nationwide broadband coverage with gigabit connectivity in rural areas and the expansion of electronic communication infrastructures in order to improve the digital connectivity of rural areas. 
A further 287 million euros will be used to support the digital transformation in public administration. These include the digitization of the justice system, the interoperability of the state's information systems, the introduction of the digital identity card and intelligent work regulations, as well as the creation of a central contact point for all online services of the public administration. And also there is the strengthening of the economic and social resilience. The plan provides 739 million euros to improve the business environment by reducing administrative burdens, lowering legal requirements for professional services and making it easier for companies to access finance. 200 million euros will help make the public sector and the judiciary more efficient. 277 million euros will be invested in promoting employment and social inclusion. Specifically, this means a redesign of the active labor market policy to promote employment and self-employment, the financing of vouchers for training and further education programs, and improvement of social benefits in terms of adequacy, orientation and coverage, and the development of new social services. And from Brussels, we now go to Edinburgh in Scotland in the UK. More than 2,000 jobs will be created with Social Security Scotland over the next 12 months, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has announced. Recruitment will start in October for staff to support the delivery of benefits due to be introduced next year, including the adult disability payment, the Scottish Government's replacement for the personal independence payment. The majority of the new roles will be based in Social Security Scotland's Dundee Head Office and Glasgow to take calls from clients and process applications for Scottish benefits. The remainder will be based across the country to provide face-to-face -face advice for people applying in the way that, world, uh, that would suit them best, whether that is online, by phone, by post or in person. The First Minister said about this, Social Security is a human right and a collective investment in the people of this country now and for future generations. These roles come at a critical time in Scotland's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and our investment will go beyond the money that we will pay in benefits. When we have introduced all our new benefits and moved clients from the DWP to Scotland, uh, to Social Security Scotland, our new Social Security service will employ more than 3,500 people. This will provide secure long-term employment in Dundee, Glasgow and across the country and deliver a positive economic impact for, of £280 million for our economy. We are committed to creating a diverse workforce to provide this public service. Having people from a wide range of backgrounds will help deliver the best service and ensure that we do things differently and treat people with dignity, fairness and respect. Social Security Scotland's Chief Executive David Wallace said about this, Social Security Scotland opened its doors in September 2018 and we are already delivering 11 benefits, seven of which are brand new. We know that our clients value our service as we have a 90% satisfaction rating. As we welcome more than 2,000 additional staff to deliver new benefits and a high quality service, we are committed to increasing diversity in the organization, so we reflect the clients we are here to serve and their lived experience. We are delighted to be able to create more jobs in Glasgow and to our head office in Dundee, and I look forward to welcoming colleagues into what's it called Ains Husband House in uh, 2022. We are a living wage, disability confident and carer positive employer. We proudly support the Fair Start Scotland program and we have committed to offering 100 roles as part of Young Persons Guarantee in 2021 and 2022. When planned benefits are fully rolled out, Social Security Scotland is expected to make payments to 1.8 million children and adults, around one in three people in Scotland. This will include benefits for families on low incomes, people who need help paying for a funeral, disabled people, carers, young people entering the workplace, 
and to help people heat their homes. Using the latest Scottish Government input-output model of the economy, it is estimated that 3,500 full-time equivalent public sector jobs in 2022 will directly support around 280 million in gross value added. And now one more time we have to go to Brussels in Belgium. On Wednesday, the European Commission announced which companies had won the EU Product Safety Award 2021. 11 companies from eight countries were honored for their innovations and investments to improve consumer safety. The main topics of the award, which is being awarded for the second time, are the protection of endangered consumer groups and increasing product safety through the use of new technologies. The prizes were awarded in two categories, small and medium-sized enterprises, the famous SMEs, and large companies. The Product Safety Award does not come with any monetary prize, but it does offer the award-winning company the opportunity to gain wide-ranging recognition. By presenting best practices, the European Commission aims to encourage other companies to raise the level of consumer protection. At the same time, the prize is intended to sensitize consumers to their right to only find safe products on the market. Didier Reinders, Commissioner for Justice and Award Ceremony host, said, The winning companies for the EU Product Safety Award set the standard for innovation that makes products safer. I hope that our efforts to protect consumers in Europe will also inspire other companies. The award is testimony to the competence, the inventive spirit and the vision of the people behind these companies. Gold, silver and bronze were awarded, as I said, to six small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as five large companies that have made a contribution to protecting vulnerable consumer groups or combining security with new technologies. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.